This is TDC Online, the City of Tucson's permitting system. The homepage is going to display four different options for login or register, apply, need help for the FAQs, and then sign up for any public training. This one will be discontinued on our one year um, go live date. If you click on login or register or apply, they're both going to take you to the login screen. Let's take a look at the need help option. This is where you'll find the FAQs for TTC Online. You also have contact information and then documents that you are able to download on various subjects for TTC Online. If we go back to the main page, we will also see that we've got the option to do a search. If you're searching for a record, all you have to do is enter the permit number. You also have the option to start typing an address and search this way. If you want to narrow down the search, you can pick the type that you're looking for first. So if you know that you have a permit or a plan, you can select one of these from the drop down. And then it gives you the option for an advanced search. With the advanced search, you can also search by a parcel number, specific applied date or issued date, and then any other descriptors you may have for what you're looking for. If you just want to see how many of one type has been created in between a date range, you're able to select that here and then hit search. While you are not logged into an account, you are still able to see anything that's public record on the website. So let's take a look at a permit. So it's gonna give you a basic overview and show the address, the description, and then the permit number. And what we did was we clicked on that blue hyperlink for the permit number, and it takes you into the permit overview. The permit overview is, again, I'm gonna show you that description that was entered, evaluation for the project, and then where it is in the process. So here we have our workflow. These are our steps from beginning to end. Anything in gray has not been started. Some of these also may not be required. Uh, a good example of this is request withdrawal. If you do not request a withdrawal, then this is not something you'd have to complete but it's gonna give you an overview of what steps have already been taken and what is yet to come. Uh, if it is red, that means that it has not been successful. So it has failed, meaning they would have to repeat the review, which you'll see happened here in this workflow. You also have, if you are signed in, available actions like scheduling and inspection, but we'll get to that later. This is just the public view if you're not logged into an account. We can see the locations associated with this permit, any fees that were paid, reviews, we have our inspections list, attachments, contacts on the account, sub records. If one of these had been applied for, it would move up here and show that it was applied for. And this is where you're going to find the withdrawal or an extension. And then more information. This is what was entered during the application process. While you are not signed in, you also have access to the map. If you want to search for records on the map, you can search by an address or a parcel. You have today's inspections. This is for the entire city of Tucson. So anything on this list is for today. We can change the date range if we want to. And then we can also change the way that we sort. If you want to search for an address, you can type it in up here. And this is what you can access while you're not logged into an account. You can also see the list of options to apply from, but when you hit apply, it's gonna take you back to that login screen. 
same thing here. If we hit apply, it's going to take us back to our list. It's going to take us to our login screen. From the search, we're able to search either by name or by description. So if we take radio coverage, this is a good example, just the first one. It's going to pull up all permits that have it within the description. It's also going to show you by category. So if you're looking for a plan type, and then you know which department it's associated with, you can pick it from the drop down. Same thing with permits, or you can search by your description or simply view all. All right, let's log into our TDC online account. On the top right hand side, you see good morning and it says guest, meaning I am logged out. I can also click on the login or register icon here. It will take me to the same screen. And then we have the option if we want to change the language that we can change the language. So let's go to our login. If you do not have a TDC online account, there is an option to register. You can also find this from the tile on the page. And this is where you're going to find a forgot password, forgot username, or register for an account. The permitting system has been live for one year. So if you have not been logged in within the past year, you may not have an online account and you would register. A good way to check to see if you have an account is to click on email the username. And then when you email yourself the username, it's going to tell you whether or not it's taken. Also, if you click register here and you enter your email address, it's going to show you if there's already an account with that name. So this one says, please check your email. If this had been used, then it would say this has already been registered for an account. All right, so let's go back to our login screen and we're going to enter our information here. Okay, so the first view from our login screen is the dashboard. The dashboard is going to be broken into a couple of categories. We've got permits, we've got plans, we've got inspections and invoices. Under the permits and the plans, these tiles are going to show you any records that you have in the system and they could be displayed in multiple tiles. So if you have a permit that was filed for recently, and it also needs your attention, it could be displayed in both of these categories at the same time. Drafts are anything that you started to apply for and then saved as draft, and we'll cover how to do that later. And then down here, you've got an overview of your inspections and invoices, which you could pay from here. Under each of these categories, you have the option to view your plans, permits, or invoices. Now, I do want to call out that instead of coming to this page, you can just go directly to the My Work tab, which is where this will redirect you to. So let's take a look at the My Work tab. The My Work tab at the top has an option to switch between invoices, permits, plans, and inspections. You may also have the option for projects up here. If your permits have been added to a project or if your plans have been added to a project, if you do not have one of these, that means that you don't have the record. So if I didn't have any plans, it wouldn't show up on TTC online. So let's take a look at our permits. And then we have the option to sort here. There's only one on my list, but it also says that this is within the last year. So if I have anything that's older than that, I'll want to go to my calendar and just go back a little bit further and open up my search range. All right, so I do have actually two permits on this list, one of them was just older than a year, but updating that filter up here helped me find it. If you want to, you can export your list to Excel if you're using that to track offline. And then let's take a look at this one while we're logged into TDC Online. 
So this is the same permit that we looked at before while we weren't logged in. And now we'll see if this has been updated on the right to include available actions, including requesting an inspection. Here we have our workflow. This is the same view that we saw before. Our location, we have our fees, we have our reviews, and then we have our attachments. Notice here that there are more attachments than what we saw when we were logged out. So some of these are restricted to the owner of the permit or whoever is added as a contact type to the permit. From here, you can click on the blue hyperlink and download the document. If this document has been submitted more than one time, you'll see a history of when it was uploaded and this one was done with corrections. We also have the option to add an attachment if we needed to. We can remove contacts or add contacts. We can also apply for a sub record type. This is only displaying the first 10. So if we wanted to, we could select to see the entire list. Our more information, again, this is what we filled out while we were doing our application process. Okay, so let's take a look at our account. So under my account, we've got some basic information, username, email address. If you want to update your email address, you can do that here. You've got addresses that you're associated with, invoices, and then if you are set up as a business account, you would see my businesses here. Let's go to our saved work. So here we can save work, we can do drafts, and then we have templates and we'll go into that a little bit deeper. And then we also have our contact manager. Contact manager is where you can add favorites. So if you are applying for more than one permit, or you're doing this on a frequent basis and you have a business partner, uh, a general contractor, someone that you're working with, you can add them here as a favorite. You would search either by name or by email address. So let's just put in Frank and see how many results we have for that. So it's gonna give you a list of email addresses. If they have a company, first name, last, and then you can select one and add the selected. You also have the option to add an associate. An associate is someone that is working on your behalf. It could be a coworker. Um, it could also be like a general contractor. So any associate that you add here will be able to see all of your records. My associations are who I am an affiliate with. So this is a company that I work with and they added me as an associate. So anything that they do online, I'll be able to see. When I go back to my My Work tab, we'll see at the top, I have the ability to turn on my association and view their records in addition to my own. So let's take a look at what my permit list looks like once I turn that on. So now I have a longer list and this is everything that they are working on. I also have the option here to do a search function. So if I want to look at it by, let's say status, I can either click it and sort, or I can select it from the drop down. So if I needed to, I could come in here and look at anything that needs to resubmittal, meaning I've submitted my documents for review staff has come back and said we need you to resubmit either with a correction or an update document. So let's take a look at a need to resubmittal. All right, so again, we have our workflow here. We have the option to pay fees. And then we also have our available actions, which is resubmit. Now you'll notice that while these did not pass, they also need attention. So if you need attention up here, it's going to be indicated by a little red circle with an exclamation point. If you recall, when we looked at our dashboard, that would fall into the attention category. Now, this has limits 
the limit is 99. Once you go past that, all you're gonna see is 99 plus, which is why we generally recommend going to the My Work tab first. All right, so again, we've got a basic description of the permit. Let's take a look at what needs attention. So we need to make a payment for fees. We have our reviews. All right, so these ones in red require resubmit, meaning they need attention, they're marked red. And they also did not pass in the workflow. If there are comments added by your reviewer, they're gonna be posted here. And occasionally they'll include their contact information. If they don't include their contact information, like this one, they're going to include detailed instructions on what you need to resubmit. From this page, you can look at the reviews that have taken place so far. But if we go to the Attachments tab, these are the documents that they're asking you to resubmit. So we have four that we submitted the first time. We can click on them and download it if we need to view. And then we've got two that came back to us and said, we need resubmittal. For this, you can look at your history. Again, this is gonna show the upload history. You can look at markups and see what markups were done. And then you also have the option to resubmit. Once you click resubmit, it's gonna ask you to resubmit all documents at the same time. So notice we have to submit two of them here. But first, we have to acknowledge that review. So these reviews and the comments have to be acknowledged, indicating that when we resubmit, we're really addressing what they're asking for. And then we would select a file from our desktop. And if you recall, we have to do both at once. So let's select a second document from our desktop. And then we can also include an additional new file. So if we feel like we need to add something that's missing, or if we want to upload a comment response, typically you'll want to upload a comment response or a revision narrative explaining how you've addressed the comments on your reviews. And then you would hit submit. Common issues we see with this, if you're uploading something that is not in the format that's supported a PDF. It's not gonna allow you to upload. Also, if your file is quite large like this one, you wanna make sure that you have a fast internet connection so that it can complete its upload. All right, let's go ahead and back out of this and go back to the My Work tab and take a look at another permit. Okay, so let's discuss the progress bar here. This one says it's at 25%, but we'll see that we've passed two of the steps out of about eight. So this 25% is close to what is going on in our workflow, but it's not always going to accurately reflect uh, the work that needs to be done. So for this progress bar, if it shows that it's not complete, but your workflow is complete and you are finished. If you need this updated, staff would have to go through and delete these. And that's not something that we would typically do because if you needed to come back later and apply for a fire code case associated to this permit, we want that option available to us. So the progress bar, it's really just a touch point. It doesn't need to be completed for you to be finished with a permit. All right, let's look at how to pay an invoice. So if you wanna pay an invoice, you have the option to search for one here. This is something we didn't have when we weren't logged in. You can also go to the My Work tab and go into your invoices. it'll show the related fee. Any payments that were made, attachments and contacts on this per or on this invoice. If we want to schedule an inspection, 
Again, we're gonna go back to the My Work tab. And then we're gonna select which permit we need to do. And we're gonna to go to the Inspections tab. To schedule an inspection, you would simply click the Action box here, and you can click Multiple, and then Request Inspection. You can enter a contact name. This is typically who's gonna be on site for the inspection, phone number, and a requested date, and then any instructions for the inspector. You can also say, apply this information to all inspections that I'm requesting. So if you're requesting more than one, it'll input that for you. Now let's talk about how to apply for a permit or a plan. We're gonna go up to the top and we have the option to apply. We can either click into a category or we can search for a permit type. So let's go ahead and just pick our first permit. It's gonna ask you to enter a location first. This is where the work is being carried out. For plans, same thing. It's where it's gonna be located. So let's do 201 North Stone. And keep in mind that the punctuation on here we go back to our application is asking for a very specific format. So we're going to follow this. And let's do 201 North Stone. It's going to offer some recommendations for us. And let's pick the first one and add that. If I need to add multiple, I could. Let's go to next and enter a description. Anything that is in red, oh, I didn't like that comma. Anything that is in red with an asterisk is required. And then it's gonna add your contacts here. Because I'm an associate, it automatically adds that company I'm working with. Let's go ahead and remove them. And let's pick another contact type. So let's say that we have a manager on site and we're adding them as a manager. If they are not a manager we need to change, we can pick a different contact type here. Sometimes the contact type is required. If you're doing a residential permit, you're likely required to have either the owner or a licensed contractor on the permit type. So I can select that from the drop down here. And then let's find our contact. All right, more information. And we can see where we are in our process up here. They're asking for us to select what type of system we need. Is it related to an open building permit? I'm going to put no. If it were, I've got an option to enter the permit number here. Each permit that I fill out or plan that I fill out online is gonna have a different set of questions and fields that are required based on what you're applying for. Let's say it's a modification. Okay, this one requires a plan set. So the instructions point me to the fire page and talk about the type of format that they want this plan set in. And this is required. So if I don't have this at this point, I can either save it as a draft and come back to it later, or I can create a template. Creating a template is something that you would use again and again. So if you had to fill out 15 of these, you might wanna create a template so that you don't have to redo the work each time. You can just come back to it and create 15 permits. If I just want to come back to this later and pick up where I left off for one record, I would save it as a draft. So let's go ahead and do that. And then go back to my dashboard. So here you'll see that my draft has been updated. Let's go ahead and click on this. And then we can resume it or we can delete. Also up here, if we go to saved work, you're gonna see your draft available 
undo your saved work. So let's resume. We still have our location, our general description, our contacts, and we completed our more information tab. And so we'll go to attachments next. All right, so required plan set, it has to be in the format of a PDF. So let's go ahead and upload our PDF. And then we can add an additional document. So if we need a site plot plan or a specification sheet, we can also add that. So let's add an additional document. And let's go to next. So here we simply sign saying that we acknowledge that we filled this out to the best of our knowledge and that we have supplied the required documentation. Once I hit next, this is going to create a permit for me. It's going to give me a permit number and it's going to take me back to the permit overview like we were seeing before. So unlike the old system, you're immediately going to have a permit number in hand. It's at the top up here. And then you can start tracking your progress online. You'll be able to see the date that you applied for it and all the steps that it's going to go through uh, and where it is in the process. Let's also talk about our calendar at the top. So this calendar is going to be specific to you. You'll be able to see your invoices due. I think these are the big call outs. And let's turn off our holidays and our public meetings. And we've got any scheduled inspections and expiration dates on here, including invoice due dates. So we'll see today is marked and then there's nothing on our calendar for this month, which is good because we don't know anything at this point. Um, but this is a nice feature to have if you just need a snapshot of your work and the timeline that you're looking at 